I mentioned about uh, starting a thread in the uh, drilling machine with a tap. Now this is something I made for the lathe. I've just noticed some corrosion. God, it's a problem. Um, anyway, this was an attempt to again help get started on a thread with a die. Uh, well, it seemed the workpiece is in the uh, probably the three jaw, and we're just looking to make a start for a couple of turns. Maybe not winding on all the way. This is again just a means of starting off. So what we got made two pieces. This one takes uh, two sizes of die. There's one in there at the moment. And it'll also take the large, uh, whatever that is. Oh, bad memory again. Yeah, inch and a half, thought it was. So that'll take inch and a half, inch and a quarter. And there's this little guy will take right down to the smallest little button die and the one inch. I've got a simple one here. Pop that in. And then I've just got the uh, tensioning set screws there. Plus the center hold for the split. This is all using split split dies. There you go. And there's a certain amount of relief at the back. Um, I can't remember it. I think the relief in this one comes right the way back. Whoops, out of frame probably. Comes right the way back to about here. See if I'm still in frame with that. Yeah, so um, it's really only for starting off. Now here is another of my number two Morse items. This is actually threaded to take a uh, take some studying for drawing it in, but it's not usually necessary. So all that happens with this is whichever piece is being used goes in there. See, we've got a tiny little hole just in there. That's to let the air out. <laughs> Otherwise, it tries to come back out. So whichever of these we're using goes in the tailstock. We bring the tailstock up to the work and then if I can find a relevant piece which I can't find at the moment it's probably, it's probably this piece one of many. That one goes in, this one's a smaller diameter I haven't got one of those handy. Anyway you get the general idea <coughs> So I can put my bar in here and that can go across. I'll put it in the tailstock actually just to show real quick. I don't know how the exposure will work out because the uh, sun's got right round to the this end of the building. <coughs> anyway, here's what we've got. Got the number two Morse in the tail stock, and we put. Let's say we're going to use. We're going to use uh, what's in here. Put that in. Put the bar in. Let it rest on the uh, compound. And now we got to imagine we're up near the uh, near the chuck. So we'll come up to the work with a coarse feed. Then we'll advance to the work until we make contact. What I tend to do then is using my handle to hand crank the spindle because I don't want to put it under power necessarily. I just want to take a cut for about two threads and uh, then I'll reverse that and this will come back off and then I can finish it by hand or whatever way I want to do it. Fairly fiddly tool to make, made in uh, 
January of 1990. <laughs> you can see the general idea. Same thing here, you've got uh, two tension screws, you've got your centerpiece for the split. And that's all there is to it. Took a bit of machining though to get it right, I must admit. But again, it's one of those pieces I was very pleased with. Okay, um, this little gizmo has had a lot of use. Took a bit of making, but uh, and I think it was a published design somewhere which gave me the idea to actually make it. <coughs> the thing I don't like about a single narrow wheel is the amount of pressure that you require both from the uh, cross slide and then the pressure against the spindle which can be considerable if it's hard material. This one is designed to straddle and when I put it together you'll see what I mean and show you more clearly. So what we've got is um, piece of uh, 3 8 bar which has been relieved to take these pieces, I don't know quite how to describe those, the forks shall we say, yes they're forks, double ended forks. And we've got a half circle machine here plus oval hole both ends, bigger inside for clearance, you can see why when it's put together. Uh, so what we've got to go across is a length of rod with a half moon at the end and that's going to go through one side and then we've got to put a washer a washer and a spring this is quite a strong spring. Another washer. Take that through the other fork piece. Another half moon. Another washer. And then a little knurled threaded knob here, which is what gives you the control. So there you see what happens, how they're closing in as I tighten that down. And of course, the, the two work as a pair. You see the way that is like a parallelogram. <coughs> and then to mount it, we've got, here we are, 1988. <coughs> Polytask, that's what I used to be called. Uh, instead of cutting this whole T piece out of one piece. This was welded. It's been welded and cleaned up so it doesn't show too much. So what happens is if, if this works instead of putting it in the lathe let's say let's say tighten that down. Now you see that just goes through So it just goes, well, slack off a bit, just goes through. So in use, we set these jaws up, the uh, top and bottom pieces, both wheels over dead center and tighten up. And then we come off and then we probably add maybe quarter or half a turn, depends on the material and diameter. That means then that as we advance to the workpiece we carefully try and pick up both wheels at once real quick and the work's rotating there obviously so it's working on the two wheels and you can see the wheels are opposite on the uh, diagonal so when they're both working together of course you get a proper crosshatch. Uh, that means then that the the work is very much less stressing the spindle 
because we're nearly over center, top and bottom center. And if the cut is not enough, whilst it's still cutting, we can increase the tension just a little bit. So in fact, that would be, that would now be about the depth of the uh, cutting face. Now these wheels are actually lasted a long time. When in use, this is, these are bolts. So the wheels, which are hardened obviously, are bearing on softer bolts, but we flood this with oil, plenty of oil. Uh, there's oil all over the place for this job. I don't usually nail dry anyway. And um, if the bolts wear out, they're replaced. These are actually just quarter BSF, another British, British thread. And I've got stacks of them. So the bolts are slightly sacrificial. Now these, we these wheels have been used for ages. If I zoom in slightly tighter, and just get a slightly more detailed look at it. There we go. We get the general idea. It works extremely well. I don't think there's any knurling approach that I could find better. And if I had to work on larger material, I'd make a larger version of that. There's nothing to beat getting these two wheels almost over top and bottom center of the workpiece. The pressure is taken very much by the tool itself. And uh, say so this has done a lot of work. Love using it.